Prime Minister defending Bahamas Air increase in airfare, Prime Minister changing the emergency power orders yet again, and Health Minister Renwood Wells says the government is not currently looking at a lockdown. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Simonet with your JCN News for this Tuesday, December 29th. Tourism and Aviation Minister Denisio Diagler defending the national flag carrier's decision to increase domestic airfare prices. Just last week, Bahamas Air Managing Director Tracy Cooper, in a release, noted that the airline has not had a domestic increase in the past eight years, adding that these adjustments have become necessary due to increase in operational costs. Well, Minister Diagler, just before the weekly cabinet meeting, says that the airline's hands were tied as they lost some $50 million due to being grounded for much of the year, while still having to handle payroll and other responsibilities. And so the government felt that it has to do whatever it can to mitigate these substantial losses and is looking for every possible avenue. And while it's, a, while it's painful and while we obviously don't want to do it, um, these losses are just so substantial that they require uh, an intervention and require um, uh, charging for the first bag and, and slight increases in, in, in domestic fares, which have not budged in eight years. The aviation minister explains why international airfare was not increased. So the international fares are obviously governed by a revenue management system, and they go up and down depending on demand and supply. Uh, the family island rates are fixed, irrespective of date of travel, irrespective of holiday, irrespective of, uh, of time of year. And so there was a slight ad adjustment in, in, in those prices. But I think, uh, and hopefully the Bahamian people understand, the losses at Bahamas Air and the fact that the government has made it a policy to uh, uh, not furlough anybody, not sell off any aircraft, as other airlines around the world have done, and to remain and to keep the cost structure as is to safeguard and protect Bahamian jobs that it does come with a little price. Over the last few years, Bahamas Air added several other routes, including Houston and Denver, to its schedule. When asked if those routes would remain, the minister says this. You know, the pandemic has really thrown everything for a loop. Um, and I think Bahamas Air is assessing each of its, of its routes. Obviously, the routes into South Florida are the mainstay of its business to Cuba and to Haiti, and certainly within the region. Um, as we look further afield, uh, they will have to reassess based on current... Mr. Diagla reminds the public that world tourism is down by 70% and travel is down due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Just days after Prime Minister Dr. Yubimine signed an amendment to the Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Risk Management Amendment Order for 2020, which notes that a person who was not a current guest at a hotel or other commercial accommodation on islands specified in the second schedule is required to submit a negative COVID-19 RT-PCR test result in order to check in as a guest or utilize any facility on hotel premises, including restaurants. Another amendment was signed by the competent authority. Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Risk Management No. 4, Amendment No. 2. This time, the PM is allowing for a negative result of a much cheaper rapid antigen test result to be used. The amendment further notes that a person who is not a guest at a hotel or other commercial accommodation shall not be required to submit a negative RT-PCR test or rapid antigen test to utilize any outdoor facility on the hotel premises, including restaurants provided that the person doesn't enter the hotel or other hotel accommodation in order to access the outdoor facility. Now the Ministry of Tourism and Aviation in a release yesterday added that since all travelers are required to complete a rapid antigen test on their fifth day of their stay in the Bahamas, they will automatically extend their ability to visit hotels and their related facilities. All tests, whether PCR or rapid antigen, are valid for seven days until January 4th, 2021, and then valid for five days thereafter. The reopening of the tourism sector commenced on November 1st this year. The Ministry of Tourism and Aviation would like to emphasize once again the need for every single Bahamian citizen and resident to do their part to keep community spread of this deadly virus to a minimum. Admitting that it will be difficult, but for the economic impact of tourism to be felt by as many Bahamians as possible, it will be necessary. Well, opposition again criticizing the newly amended EPO. 
When the competent authority released the amendment number four order on December 26, Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis had urged the Prime Minister to avoid putting Bahamians at unnecessary expense, claiming that patrons wanting to enjoy a $5.95 breakfast will have to pay about $150 for their dining experience. With the amended EPO signed December 28th, Mr. Davis says the rash of rushed and half-baked emergency orders, followed by media changes and walkbacks in response to public backlash, continue to harm small businesses while confusing and frustrating residents and visitors alike. He says that these haphazard releases of amendments to the emergency orders reflect poorly on the government and does not promote or encourage public confidence in leadership. Mr. Davis contends that major and consequential policy decisions such as the Oban Petroleum deal and the acquisition of the Grand Lucayne Hotel property were mishandled by the Prime Minister, adding that this behavior continued through the Dorian crisis and the current COVID-19 pandemic. The Progressive Liberal Party leader says the Prime Minister is simply struggling to get it right, and with each successive debacle, the business community, residents and visitors alike have all had to pay a price and suffer unnecessary inconvenience. Health Minister Renwood Wells told media outside of Cabinet this morning that government is currently not looking at a possible lockdown. However, the COVID-19 numbers in mid-January will determine if Bahamians have been naughty or nice during the holiday season, adhering to the COVID-19 protocols. He also adds this. The numbers are under 10. Uh, we will be monitoring it and keeping an eye on it. Uh, we're looking at our hospitalization rate, which is still down. Um, so overall, the health circumstance in the country in regard to COVID is fantastic. What it would be like in about two weeks, we are obviously going to keep monitoring it. That's our job in the healthcare sector. Minister Wells also gave the country's positivity rate in recent weeks as it relates to community transmission of the virus. Over the past month or more um, in epi weeks, and so we do have control of it uh, in regards to community spread through the healthcare apparatus to be able to deal with any pot uh, potential surge initially. We have our contact tracing team in place. Once again, the minister is asking Bahamians to please follow all guidelines put in place to help with the mitigation of the virus. He noted that he doesn't want a possible third wave as the country's economy is slowly rebuilding itself. You're watching JCN News. When we return, the national COVID-19 numbers, police investigating an apparent suicide, and opposition chairman chiding the prime minister. Stay with us.